every so often, we look at really weird things on this channel. Honestly, who am I kidding? Pretty much most of the time, we look at really weird and obscure things on this channel. And this is another one of those times. So this right here, this is a different desktop environment. This is not Hyperland. This is something that I've been trying out. This is a text-based graphical environment. That probably makes no sense. What I'm saying is this is a graphical environment where every single element is text. Sure, most of us are going to be happy in GNOME, KDE, XFC, some random window manager out there. And sure, it's fun to argue about Xorg or Wayland, but I think most of us can agree that graphical environments are good. There's going to be that one person that's like, no, I only use the TTY. I'm watching this in a frame buffer right now. I know you're out there. If you're out there, be sure to leave a comment. But... Let's say you wanted to be in a text, text-based environment, but you still wanted some of those graphical-like features. Well, Twin might be what you're looking for. Because I'm running this inside of a real graphical session, I have perfectly fine mouse support. I can drag these windows around, I can resize them, I can press this button here, which is going to hide the actual window, but leave the bar there, or... I could close the window, but once you close a window, you probably want to bring it back. So most of your operations are going to be with this menu along the top. Let's open up a new terminal, and how about we run something inside of it? Let's say, for example, I want to check what's running on my system. Sure, we could use HTOP, but BTOP works as well. Now, BTOP, make sure if you're going to use this, set it into TTY mode, because this is only a 16 color terminal. This can run on your TTY as well, so it can't exactly be true color or anything like that. If you try to run it with anything else besides the TTY theme, uh, let's just close out the application. Yeah, there you go. It does that. So, um, TTY mode is very important for running it in here. But if instead of using that, you prefer using HTOP, for example, HTOP, most other applications are going to work perfectly fine. Say, for example, you wanted to do some web browsing. Let's open up another terminal and let's run w3m www.google.com. Look at that. Google works. Now, I don't know the hotkeys for w3m, so I'm not going to get much further than this. But hey, you could theoretically, kind of, live inside this session. Now, being a text-based session, you probably don't want to be using your mouse. Or if you're running this from the TTY, you are just not going to have mouse support. So what you can do is control everything using your keyboard. Now, in the configuration file, you can set hotkeys to do every single thing that I'm going to show you. But if you don't have those hotkeys set up, what you can also do is press the pause button, a button you've probably never pressed before, and this is going to let you use your keyboard to go through the context menu. From here, we can do everything we can do with our mouse. For example, opening a new terminal, pressing enter on that will do so. Well, let's go back to that. Let's go and say, move a window around. If we press enter on that, now we can use our arrow keys to shift that where you want it to go. If we press enter, then it's where we want it to be. Let's go back to that. We can do resize, scrolling, centering, maximizing, full screening, roll up. Roll up is going to be that thing where it hides the application window, but still shows the bar. But what about that raise and lower? So this is going to change the focus you have and also change the window that's in front. If we run it once, now we're going to be on the W3M window. If we run it again, now we're going to be on the HTOP window. But you probably want a more accurate way of going through these windows. Well, what you can do is go back to that and go to list. This is going to open a list of all your currently open windows. Now, because they are all terminals, they all say twin term. But let's say, for example, you had another one open. If we go to the hamburger menu here, I could open a clock. Now, if we go back to that, go to list, we could go to the twin term here, or we could go back to it again and go to the clock. Now, obviously, this is a far less efficient way of moving around when you're actually going through the menu. If you're using this on a day-to-day -day basis, you'd want to hotkey all of these actions.
There are some basic hotkeys by default you might want to know, like Alt-Tab for cycling through the windows. So you don't really have to go through that list method or anything like that. This is already here for you. Another thing you can do is alt up, which is certainly a weird choice, but this is going to open a terminal window. Now, one thing you may have spotted is the menu I have here doesn't give me the ability to spawn a clock or any of those other windows. All we have is a new terminal. So what's the deal there? Well, right now, this is the menu for being on an actual window. If we want to go and see the menu for the entire desktop, what we need to do is unfocus from the windows. And now we have a bunch of extra choices. Now we have the hamburger menu, so we can spawn extra things like the options for configuring things about the desktop. It's not everything, it's just a couple of things like shadows and hidden menus and things like that. Most of the configuration is in the configuration file. This is just some stuff you might want to modify while you're actually running. We have the buttons here to modify which buttons are actually being shown. So we can say, I don't want to see the close button. I want to move button one. Let's say I want to put it on the other side, for example, or maybe I want it to be like somewhere around a quarter of the way in. Or we can do the same thing with the other button. But if you don't actually need it, if you push it off the edge here, go lower than zero, and that will disable it. If everything you're doing is inside the TTY, you don't really need those buttons visible because you're going to do everything with hotkeys anyway. If it is currently disabled and you go one more, now it's going to appear on the other side. If it's on the left side, if you go less, now it's back on the right side. If you do happen to be running this inside of a graphical environment, you don't have to use the menu to go and unfocus. All you can do is just click on the background and that is going to do the unfocus as well. Now, throughout all of this, you're probably building up one really, really big question. Why? Why would anybody in their right mind actually go and use this? Well, I can think of a couple of reasons, and some of them might make a bit more sense than the others. Let's say you're one of those rare people out there who really like to live in the TTY, but you don't like the idea of running TMUX to have multiple windows running, and you don't like the idea of just having one window available. You want something that's kinda graphical-like, but you don't want to take that extra step to go into a full graphical environment. Well... This is kind of that middle ground between the two points, where you get a lot of those graphical-like features. It's sort of a text-based floating environment. I think it's pretty cool for that. But let's say you also like Tmux. Well, because this is basically just a glorified terminal environment, you could go and say, run Tmux inside of Twin. And it's going to work perfectly fine. So now you get both a floating environment and a tiling text-based environment, giving you pretty much all of the power you could ever want in a text environment. This is really cool, right? Like, I think this is cool that someone decided to make this. This is not the sort of project I need in my life. I like my graphical environment. I like Hyperland. I like what I was doing over on the X side with BSPWM and Awesome and things like that. But if you are one of those weird people that live in the TTY, this actually might be worth giving at least a little bit of a look. The only problem I kind of have with it is the documentation is not very good. As you guys know, I use NeoVim. And like regular Vim, it has absolute God tier documentation. It has a God tier tutorial. Yes, it is a lot of stuff to read. And yes, it can be confusing getting your head wrapped around the way it works. But you can't say it's not documented well. Twin, on the other hand, it does have a lot of documentation in the tutorial. The problem is it's basically just a text dump. Like, there's no clear section. Like, there are definitely sections here, but, like, it's not laid out as you'd expect a tutorial to be laid out. It's just walls and walls and walls of text. So you sort of have to read the entire thing to know at all what you're supposed to be doing. Like, one basic thing. You'd expect there to be a list of default hotkeys in the, you know, tutorial. Because it's a tutorial, it's trying to teach you how things are working. 
I found out the hotkeys by going and looking at the twin RC. This is the configuration file, and I searched through it, and I found things like Alt Up for spawning a new terminal, Alt C for copy, Alt V for pasting, things like that. But I wouldn't have known this unless I read through the config file as well. This is one of those weird projects where some random person makes it, and they're like, hey, I might as well release it because maybe someone else out there would like to use it as well. And the problem when like one or in this case, I guess five people make a project is sometimes documentation isn't a key focus. A lot of developers are great at making incredible software projects, but then the documentation is like, Maybe we need to do that at some point, but if you've been working on it yourself the entire time, well, maybe we don't need the documentation because I already know how to use it. So we'll just put something together and wing it from there, basically. Don't get me wrong. This is a really, really cool idea and has other great things like being able to detach your twin session and then connect to another one, disconnect from that one and reconnect back to the original. This is is super cool, but it is kind of a nightmare to work out how to use. Unless you are super dedicated to this idea, it's gonna be kind of a slog to work it out. And here's the best part. You might think because of what this is, this is some ancient project from, you know, 1990 or something like that, and nobody is developing this, and it's just sitting there rotting away. It does describe itself as a retro program for embedded or remote systems, which should give you an indication that it's not actually retro. Yes, it's been around for a long time. This file was last changed 16 years ago. This one, 21 years ago. But its last commit was nine hours ago. This is still getting some amount of development, not much, but still some. Also, I'm running this on Arch, but it is known to work on FreeBSD, so the BSD users get some love as well. I absolutely adore projects like this, not because they're something I'm going to run on a day-to-day -day basis, very, very far from that, but because someone out there was like, I have an idea, nobody else out there cares about my idea, but I'm going to implement it anyway because I want it, and hey, I might as well just release it under a license where other people can use it and modify it because maybe someone else does want it. Maybe I just didn't know that person and now they see it and they're like, oh, that actually is super, super cool. And if you're one of those people, now you know about it. If you're not though, I hope you enjoyed learning about a really, really weird environment. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to Libero Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I need more weird environments like this.